we're going to see how to calculate the payment. So we're pretty much going to pick up right where we left off, except for I'm going to make a formatting change to all of the widgets. And I'm going to make them a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to, at the end of each one, add font. Helvetica and 16 and I went through and did this in advance. I added that to all of the existing uh, widgets in our application. Okay, so with that done, we're now ready to go ahead and see how we can calculate our payment. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make a button to click. Okay, I'm going to assign a command to it and the command is going to be the yet to be defined calc payment. Okay. And once again, we have to reference self. Okay. We'll just set a few formatting options. Okay. And then we'll place it. We're up to row seven. It will give us some padding. So we'll try a hundred on the left and five on the right. So it's lined up with the other widgets and then give us some padding Y too. Okay. So there's the only control we're adding. So we're going to write the function outside of the main loop. Okay, we're ready to do it. We'll define cal payment. Okay, we're going to have to pass in the class. Okay, and then I'm just going to assign some instance variables inside the function. So PV is going to become self PV. All right, and oh, I need it to be a floating. Okay, so instead of a string, it's going to become a float. And then when I go get it, I have to call the get method. All right, so that's every widget has a get method and that's how I go and get it. And then later when we want to place something in that widget, it has a set method. Okay, we'll do something similar for the interest rate. Okay, and then once again for the term, this can be an integer. Okay, once we get those variables, we can go ahead and calculate our payment. All right, and here I'm going to use NumPy because it has a built-in uh, loan calculator, so I might as well use that. Okay, it's going to be the interest rate, but it's going to have to be adjusted for the frequency, and uh, so we assume people will type in a, a number without a, uh, it may have a decimal, but it won't start as you know 0 0.05. It'll be five for five percent. So I'm going to divide this by 1200 to adjust it. All right. So first for percent, second for month. All right. We're going to take the term and multiply that by 12. All right. Again, adjusting for month. And then we're going to take the present value and we're going to make it the negative present value. Okay. And I'll just say uh, that we pay it off. So future value is zero. All right. And by default, uh, it's going to uh, start accruing as you'd expect as soon as you start borrowing the money. Okay, and then we'll just calculate total. So total is going to equal payment times 12 times term. Okay, so now we're just ready to place those in the proper widgets. Okay, and we do that by referencing those variables that we set earlier. All right, so this one's called PMT. This one's called total. So I'm going to go self.pmt.set. All right. And it needs a string here right now. They are uh, floating numbers. So first thing I need is a dollar sign. All right. And then I will add to that. And then I'm going to format PMT and I'm going to display it as a five place with a comma floating point number. All right. And we can give it two decimals. Okay. Do something similar for the total. Again, we'll start with the dollar sign. And I don't know how big this will be. It'll be bigger than the payment though. So we'll just say it's got eight with a comma. And I mean, not that the decimals matter too much when we're talking about the total, but let's put them on there anyway. And that should do it. That should allow us to input some numbers and calculate the payment. So all that's left to do then is test it. Okay, so I mistakenly put this in at the wrong indent level. So I have to back it out one. And now we can go ahead and test our application. Here's our window. All right, we can see the fonts bigger. It's easier to see. 
and I'll just make up some numbers. So I guess we'll borrow 262,000. All right, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to format it with a comma. Uh, I'm going to set the interest rate at 3.375 and for 30 years, and let's see if it works. And it looks like it works. So if we were to have a loan like this, uh, it would cost us 1158 and some change, and the total over 30 years, uh, for sixteen nine eighty five. So next up, we're going to start adding the controls so we can compare that refinance loan with the existing loan. 